Mark, what did you think of this movie? I mean, just in a general perspective, kind of on Rosa's, um, kind of what Rosa's saying, like, in, in general, like, it's a very competent film. Um, uh, the director, it's his second feature film. I mean, he's fairly young, and, the, like, the production uh, crew was, like, very small. So for them to pull that this this high quality film out that's like very captivating was 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 super impressive and i'm just very interested in to see what uh, i think his name is thomas what is his name thomas robert lee yeah thomas robert lee i'm interested to see what else he does i know he had a 2016 film that i want to want to check out now but definitely hopeful to see what he can do in the future but yeah i kind of would like to echo what rosa was saying with some of the playing into the tropes of the female mystique and um ultimately just kind of that that rabbit trail that we we get down where where eventually the the female character is the the undoing of basically everything and it's just kind of tiring but uh, and and it, but overall, though, the movie itself it was a, a entertaining watch. Um, again, the acting was great. The dialects were awesome. Whoever did the coaching, the training, I know they did get, have a lot of Irish actors, but even the ones that weren't Irish like did an excellent job on, on the accents, which to me, if it's not done right, can like really just annoy me. But like I, I was very well pleased with that. So, For me, this film is very atmospheric. Mm-hmm. And typically this movie in the way that it's kind of like sets up this this village and, and sets up its its plot in the very first few minutes. Uh, I honestly didn't think this was going to be a movie that I enjoyed because I get a lot of crap for this, but I am not a fan of The Witch, which <laughs> a lot of people love. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm not a fan of that, or uh, this movie also kind of reminds me of The Village. I'm not a fan Mm -hmm. of that movie either. Um, (laughs) But I I think really kind of what sells me on this is the the cinematography, the fact that, as Rosa was saying, like it's not a jump-scare-driven movie. Um, It is very much like the psychological aspects of that, and I think it's it's well-spoken. It's a lot smarter than a lot of the other witchcraft or ghost movies that we've gotten before in in the past and i think for me the what really kind of seals this is the performance of jessica reynolds who Mm. plays audrey in this and this is her this is her debut yeah Uh, she's done one small television show before this but this was kind of like her like breakout and it's just incredible just to think about that and that she's with you know these people uh, actors and actresses that have been doing this for years and mm-hmm. i think she stands out above them all and uh i just i don't know what it i love this movie <laughs> um, <laughs> uh then but i i do kind of agree like there are some problematic issues with it as we're gonna kind of uh get to talk about and i i'm interested in kind of hearing this point of view from people that from especially from rosa because uh from someone that doesn't traditionally like horror i'm interested in kind of seeing how your perspective is is kind of grown out this but we're gonna take a quick commercial break real quick we're gonna be right back and we're gonna jump in and we're gonna we're gonna conjure up a mess of spoilers for this movie If you or someone you know is listening to this podcast right now and you're struggling with suicide, addiction, self-harm, or depression, we encourage you guys to please reach out. This is the heartbeat of why we do what we do. Suicide is currently the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. And as of this recording, there are 132 suicides that take place each and every day on American soil. And when you scale back internationally, there are 800,000 successful suicides. That is one death roughly every 40 seconds. So if you or someone you know is struggling, you guys can go to victimsandvillains.net forward slash hope. That resource is going to be right in the description wherever you guys are currently listening or streaming this. There you'll find resources that include the National Suicide 
Lifeline, which is 1-800-273-8255. You can also text HELP to 741-741. We also have a plethora of other resources, including churches, getting connected with counselors, LGBT resources like the Trevor Project, and also Veteran Hotline as well. Please, if you hear nothing else in the show, understand that you, yes, you listening to this right now, have value and worth. We get it. Suicide, depression, mental health, these are hard topics, and the stigma around them doesn't make it any easier. But please, consider the resources right in the descriptions below, wherever you guys are listening, because... Once again, you have value and you have worth, so please stay with us. And then the Wicked Witch said, welcome back to Victims and Villains. We're getting ready to talk about the spoilers of The Curse of Audrey Earnshaw. So if you guys haven't seen this movie yet, click the links in the descriptions after you guys check out the Latinx lens podcast please go ahead and check out this movie and then come back to hear the rest of this conversation uh mark i want to hear what's the first thing you want to talk about being that this is your very first show yeah so hmm i guess like the 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 biggest thing for me was some of the the relationship between agatha so the mother of Audrey and Audrey herself, it just seemed a little strained and um, it just was a little bit difficult for me to, to kind of figure out their, their relationship because in parts of the movie, like Agatha was talking to Audrey about how she's like surprised that she's turning into this kind of like oracle or whatever this like a bringer of evil and how she misses her sweet daughter but it's like from conception she was supposed to be this evil thing and it just was probably the the biggest thing for me to get past besides the i guess the stereotypical um anti-feminist kind of perspective of, of the film in a way where from leading into some of those similar problematic tropes of other movies but what did y'all y'all think about that relationship um well well in my per, in my point of view as and as a mother <laughs> mm-hmm. um i i think that even though she consciously um conceived the child probably in exchange to her to um her uh, proper um prosperous land and, and such uh i don't know maybe maybe she she did have that maternal instinct and she did care for for her daughter and um you as a mother of course you you do whatever you want you can uh to to protect uh to protect your child and when they do start to <laughs> have a change of, of, of personality or, or of a um just acting out pretty much you do um, it, it is concerning, and even though I'm pretty sure she was she she was conscious that this was probably her destiny and what was going to happen, um, it, it seemed like she had a change of heart. Um, Agatha, the, the mother, mm-hmm. towards the end um, when she was trying to to leave and, and she was trying to just walk away from all of this and and realize that it wasn't um, any good. So I guess she she in a sense she wanted to. Um, get it just keep her daughter and trying somehow um trying to avoid uh what ultimately occurred <laughs> yeah so it's interesting I... okay sorry mark no, sorry. You, no you go ahead you go ahead so it's interesting because the right around all of this mystery throughout the entire film is who is the father because mm-hmm. we we meet her as a single parent and just the circumstances that created and then in in, right before she sacrificed in the end we find out that she's she's still virgin like you know so we're led to believe kind of like this there's this ambiguality and ambiguous Mm -hmm. nature about it that you know perhaps that she made a deal with the devil as it's kind of like taught about and um i think for her 
uh, I kind of go back to the mother and son relationship from the Babadook, where the entire time this kid is really just wanting to kind of protect his mom and really wants what's best. And he'll do whatever is necessary to make that happen. But for this one, I think that that's kind of really where this rebellion starts. Uh, Colum is, you know, mourning the loss of, of Liam, his son, as Agatha just happens to be passing by. Audrey's in this, like, box or tote. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's like, you know, he, he basically, like, slaps her and beats her and humiliates her. And, um, you know, she kind of wants a vengeance. And then when, you know, Audrey's like, let me go get vengeance for you agatha is like no you know then that rebellion kind of turns to we are weak uh i i want to i think it starts from a, a, a genuine place but i think it eventually kind of power corrupts kind of idea Hmm. yeah i guess to me see him like i i cared enough about their relationship you know and really didn't have a good perspective of who they were and kind of how they typically interacted with each other and you do see that they do care about each other but um agatha definitely seems like a very cold and audrey is just i guess kind of still coming of age and not really a an adult yet and i think it's just something just something's missing there you know it just i i would have liked to see a little bit more between them to kind of see see that relationship and i think it could have carried a lot more weight especially at the end whenever audrey does pretty much make everybody turn on agatha and sacrifice her and i think it, it could have given a lot more um weight to that because it just didn't seem like there was much of a relationship there anyways you know yeah i can definitely see that and i i feel like for me like my biggest problem is with this film has also been the way that so the opening scroll kind of tells the history of like where you're meeting these characters mm-hmm. and you know all vital information that i think helps kind of set a lot of the the tension early on in this film but it's also never really kind of like they never really build up the town as well like you just kind of seem to go shift between these two to three families and Mm -hmm. you're never really given a reason as to why you should root for them you're never given Mm -hmm. a reason as to why you should even kind of care about them past the fact that they don't have the prosperity that Agatha has. Yeah. And it's like, what makes Agatha a, a person we shouldn't root for, or should we root for Agatha? You know, and just, you know, there's just a a little bit of a setup on, on some relationships, some characters that I just, I didn't care about them to really, really stay invested in them. You know, anybody could die, anything could happen and I'd be okay with it because I, I just don't know who's who's right and who's wrong yeah i think that um i i do understand i i do understand where you're coming from uh, pertaining to that lack of like relationship development or even get a little glimpse of how was it like uh, before uh, um, these events happened but mm-hmm. they, they, they just briefly do it especially like towards the beginning when when um, one of the uh of the, re- uh, the i don't know villagers residents come um over to agatha's uh, house and asks um for for a trade or, or something of a kind i guess in, in that particular scene you're supposed to um feel compassionate <laughs> towards the guy who's somehow mm-hmm. seeking help um, for his family and then she just turns him away um, but I think, and it's just brief, it's just a few minutes when, where she, where, where, um, Audrey asks, why, why didn't you help her? It, it, there seems to be that genuine, um, sense of, of, of caring from her. And when, when they do, um, leave and, and they do come for, um, across the, the, the funeral and, and Agatha, um, gets slapped, um, 
I think in that sense, Audrey is still that, that, that has that still, I don't know, even know what to call it. I don't even know if it's purity or not. Um, 